This is a Spectrum DX6i 2.4 GHz radio control system. The system uses a transmitter, a receiver, five servos and battery packs. In this installation I'm using Futaba servos. I've used Futaba servos for many years and I find them very good and very reliable. The first job is to fit the shock mounting grommets to the servos. Each servo comes with an accessory pack containing four grommets, four brass eyelets, four mounting screws and three servo horns. Fitting these anti-vibration mounts is quite a fiddly job, made worse by the fact that the rubber components are covered in French chalk, which gets onto your fingers and makes it very difficult to grip anything. This is why I normally do this job in the kitchen in the house. If I drop anything on the floor in the kitchen, I will be able to find it again. If I drop anything on the floor in the workshop, it will be lost forever. When fitting the metal eyelets that hold the grommets in place, I would normally use a mounting screw to guide them into position. These metal eyelets must be fitted from the underside. Most people fit them on the top and this is not the way to do it. Doing it this way allows the screw to hold the eyelet firmly in position onto the mounting. Of the three servo horns supplied with the servo kits, the one we need to use is the larger one. This large servo horn has got numbers on it, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And all the arms except the one marked with a number 1 will need cutting off. These servo horns are made of a very tough nylon material and the best way to trim them to size and remove the arms you don't want is to use a very sharp pair of wire cutters as shown in the video. And this is what we need to achieve, a single servo arm with the number 1 clearly displayed on it which will allow it to be at 90 degrees to the servo when the servo is in a neutral position. You will notice that one of the servos is slightly different to the rest. This is an S3001 type, a slightly more expensive servo. This will be used for the rudder control. Before fitting the servos into the boat, it's best to check out the radio system. First, fit the four batteries to the transmitter. Observe the correct polarity and then replace the cover. These systems are designed for radio control aircraft and helicopters, but work equally well in boats. If all is well, when you switch on the transmitter, the display should look like this. The receivers of 2.4 GHz systems have to be locked to the transmitter. This is done by fitting the bind plug, which is supplied as part of the set, into the battery connector of the receiver. Then in turn, fit the battery into one of the other sockets. An LED within the receiver will flash rapidly. All you now have to do is switch on the transmitter whilst holding the trainer switch in the on position. This will bind the transmitter to the receiver and you will hear as you release the trainer switch. The light on the main receiver should now be fully lit and not flashing. Unplug the battery lead and unplug the binding plug and plug the battery lead into the battery socket of the receiver. Switch off the system and plug in all the servos. Then switch the system back on and the servos can be tested. Check the function of each servo carefully. It should correspond to a control on the transmitter. One of the servos will work from the switch on the top left hand side of the transmitter. This will be the forward and reverse servo. This clip shows why radio control is called digital proportional. The amount of movement on the servos is directly proportional to the amount of movement on the sticks on the transmitter. One problem with radio control systems, when many people are using them, is the frequency control. Each transmitter and receiver have to run on a match frequency. With these systems, the receiver is locked to the specific transmitter, which makes it so that many people can be sailing boats, flying aircraft or running model cars at the same time. 